Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to take a look at some quick tips for helping you get started if you are just now trying out the forest. There's going to be 13 tips total with a couple of them are going to have a couple of parts to them. When you start the game, you should try to go ahead and make your way to the largest cannibal village as you can see here once you figure out where you are. You see here on the map exactly where it is. You'll know you're there when you get to the village that has a lot of huts in a big circle and then another stretch that heads off into the distance. You'll want to go to the middle circle where there is a old gnarly tree and over to the side past one of the tennis players that's been mangled you will find another hut standing alone with a bit of rope going down. Once you reach the bottom of the rope, you'll see a bit of flickering light in the distance. Go ahead and run towards this light, which will take you down to the end where you can see there's a small crawl space under and here is a body of an explorer. This is where you can find the map among a few other things. Early in the game, you want to go ahead and try to make a stick bag, a rock bag, a water skin, and a berry pouch. Each of these will help you to carry more supplies as well as the berry pouch allowing you to carry blueberries which can serve as both a food and water source. To craft each of these items you will need rabbit skin. So early off hunting rabbits is going to be a critical thing you need to do. Now you can use the bow and arrow, you can try using the spear, or just picking up a pebble and throwing it can be used to kill rabbits early off in the game. My third tip for you in the forest is to make a spear early off by combining two sticks. These are very useful for hunting large animals such as deer and boar, in addition to being useful for spearing fish when you find them in water. Tip number four is in the early game, your stamina is not going to be that great. It's going to take time for you to build up your strength and athleticism. So when you're running low on stamina, you can build a bench, chairs, couch, any of these will allow you to rest and regain your stamina, though out of this group, the bench is the least resource intensive. By keeping your stamina restored this way and through regular sleep, it will eliminate your need to use sodas, which eventually will have a negative impact on your stats. Tip number five is when you are out at night, if you get caught in the rain or fall in the water, you're going to get an alert that you are cold and wet and you need to build a fire to get dry. If you stay cold and wet for too long, you see your visuals starting to frost over and at a certain point you're going to start taking damage to your health, to your stamina. It's going to be a bad time. You're not going to have fun. But instead of building a fire, what you can do is take either axe you have, any of them will work, put one single piece of cloth with them, equip it, and then light it on fire with your lighter. This will do the same function as a fire itself however if you are out in the rain the rain tends to put these out tip number six make sure you keep an eye on your meter in the lower right so that you know when you're getting hungry and thirsty as soon as your meter starts to flash red for your food level or your water level you need to eat or drink something tip number seven make sure you keep an eye on your stats pages in your survival book because it will show you things such as you're feeling hungry how your strength, your athleticism are faring, if you are infected and need to find aloe to heal. This is a very important thing to keep up with so you don't lose too much strength or athleticism or more importantly, your sanity. Tip number eight. When you're first getting started and you're looking to build a base, my recommendation is to try to build a base near a useful food resource of some sort of animal. My preference is to stick a base near one of the turtle spawn locations because this provides you not only generic meat for consumption, but gives you easy access to turtle shells for producing water collectors. We had a recent update that added the ability to use hotkeys in the game. So now you can actually assign four items to your one, two, three, and four keys by equipping them to different points on your backpack. This is done by selecting your backpack and combining these other options wherever you want them to be stored. Tip number 10, once upon a time, the only way to get feathers for making your arrows was to kill birds or to chase them away making them drop feathers. Recently, the devs decided to add birdhouses to the game. So my recommendation is to build at least two or three birdhouses in a group because you can see how readily they will come and sit there 
leave feathers floating in the air, and more importantly, they will have feathers that you can walk up and grab from the birdhouse the same way a sap collector works. These can be placed very tightly together. You can place them on top of each other. Uh, they can also be placed on a single post if you just want to do that and place a little spot outside in an open area from your base. You can also, of course, place these on trees. However, building them inside your base or right next to your base is much more convenient. Tip number 11. When it comes to lighting your base, you have a few different options. Your first option is, of course, you can build either a fire, a fire pit, or a standing fire in your base. The only issues with these is you have to keep reloading them to keep them burning. Your other lighting options include a standing skull lamp, a hanging skull lamp, and, of course, a skull chandelier. Now, each of these requires skulls, which you can get either from killing and burning cannibal bodies, or the easiest way is to head to one of the cannibal patrol sites or cannibal camps where they have multiple effigies and chop them down. Many of the effigies will drop at least one skull when you chop them down. Okay, these last two tips have to do with traps. Tip number 12 is that right now, in the current state of the game, the most efficient trap for killing cannibals is the happy birthday trap. With a recent update giving some improvements to it, it now works better than the rest of the traps. You don't have to worry about trying to kill them afterwards, unless of course you go in hard mode, in which case they may not die on the initial hit. In addition to this, once the happy birthday trap has been sprung, it will act as a barrier preventing cannibals from getting through to you. So effective placement of this can allow you to provide a secondary wall of defense that cannibals tend to not attack. Okay, last but not least, tip number 13. I don't prefer these myself, but if you're looking for a trap that is good at killing mutants, rope swing traps are the best option. One little catch is because of the way they are set up, you're going to have to be able to funnel the mutant into the pathway of the trap where that rope is going to swing and hit them. All right, everybody, that's it for today's tips. I hope these tips help you out, especially if you're just getting started in the forest. Now, if you are a seasoned veteran player of the forest, of course, you're going to know all these things already. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button. Also, hit subscribe and tick the notification bell if you haven't already done it. Because I'm posting six days a week, so you got plenty of content coming your way. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter if you want to keep up with everything that way. Once again, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching. I am Mr. Spicy, and I will see you in the next video.